morning everybody and welcome to St Vincent's. This particular short talk is on the dangers of proportionalism in moral decision making. As we all know, there's a kind of a battle afoot during Pope Francis's pontificate. It concerns a struggle for dominance between two standpoints on Christian morality. To start with, the encyclical Amoris Laetitia didn't go down very well in certain quarters of the church particularly among some very high-ranking clergy. There were firestorms about the possibility of divorced and remarried people, not sanctioned by the Church, being allowed to receive Holy Communion. Then there was the closing down of the popular John Paul II Institute on Family Life in Rome, and the firing of two of its more prominent faculty members, and in their place, the hiring of two moral theologians, known to challenge the Church's teaching on contraception and homosexuality. Then, of course, there was the ultra-liberal Cardinal Marx of Germany, who had the ear of the Pope, but not so much now, I would say, aiming to force a rethink on clerical celibacy and certain other important moral teachings. Pope Francis has, however, reiterated his full support for the clerical celibacy. He has also discounted so-called gay marriage. The above thinking, although it's gone slightly off the boil, as I said, is without doubt underpinned by a brand of moral theology known as proportionalism, which has held sway among many bishops and priests and some laity since the heady days of the 1960s. Over these years, the person in the pew has been fed on a diet of this stuff by and large. I would say this is the main reason why there has been such a massive fall off in confessions and in church attendances generally. We priests need to wake up to this thing called proportionalism. What is it? Well, it's a version of the moral life which is of the view that the end justifies the means when it comes to pro moral problem solving. So long as the moral actor has an overall good intention in deciding on a course of action, he can't be faulted. This could, of course, validate any action, even those which sacred scripture and the church's Perelian moral teaching have held to be intrinsically sinful. That's the problem. Proportionalism flourished in most seminaries for at least three decades after Vatican II, especially in Europe and the United States. It was very much part of the thinking behind the descent from Pope Paul VI's encyclical Humanae Vitae, and it quickly became clear that the advocates of proportionalism could justify dissent on any moral issue of the day, and since many of the present day bishops were schooled as seminarians in proportionalism, not all embraced it, but quite a number did. Some characteristics of proportionalism are as follows one, I and only I decide what's right and wrong, two, the subjective trumps the objective in areas of morality. Three, a good intention trumps intrinsic malice. Four, situation ethics determines guilt or the lack of it. Five, no behaviour in itself is always wrong in all circumstances. Now, the people schooled in this view would often say, for instance, that abortion as a result of rape, may be morally justified. You see where this is taking us. St. John Paul II, however, roughly over 30 years ago, responded to the basic tenets of proportionalism in his celebrated encyclical Veritatis Splendor. He rejected the notion of conscience as being autonomous when it comes to important moral choices and he refuted the proportionalist soft, stand, soft stance on intrinsically moral acts, evil acts. 
Pope Benedict has also been unrelenting in his critique of proportionalism, describing it as a moral theory which contradicts the very foundations of our faith. He even says it's partly to blame for the clerical abuse crisis. That said, proportionalism has had a broad appeal among post-Vatican II Catholics, which includes quite a, a number of the clergy. It is part of the creeping secularism of our times, even influencing the Church's stance on the objective moral order, which has held its sway for centuries. St. Augustine wrote in his Confessions, Wrong is wrong, even though everyone is doing it. Right is right, even though nobody is doing it. Yes, moral theology did need revamping after Vatican II, and the Council itself recognised this. It was partly, it was particularly keen having the teaching of moral theology firmly rooted in Scripture. But most of the mainstream moral theology caved in to the cultured onslaught of the 1960s and it was at that time that proportionalism began to take root. But seminary students from roughly the 90s became less enamoured now with proportionalism. But it continues to be taught in their moral theology classes, but with perhaps less vigour. The theory of proportionalism is mostly adhered to today by an older generation of priests and bishops, who, having been swayed by its charms, stubbornly cling on to it, even though it's producing little or no fruit, whilst at the same time they are rejecting the teaching of Veritatis Splendor. Young people today expect better leadership from the Church, and they have a perfect right to it. It's not surprising that over the decades a certain narrative has arisen around proportionalism, contrasting its adherence with a caricature of its opponents as follows. Adherents of proportionalism are reasonable and balanced people. Opponents are rigid and extreme. Proponents employ sound moral discernment in order to understand the specific situation of the individual. Opponents do not. Proponents are pastorally realistic and sensitive. Opponents, not so much. Now the Pope himself, Pope Francis, has shown some sympathy to the above narrative. He has been exposed, however, to the theory of proportionalism for most of his adult life. By and large, so also has Pope St. John Paul II, but he didn't adhere to it, despite living under authoritarian dictatorships such as fascism and communism. The Amazonian Synod in Rome some time ago was imbued with proportionalist ideas and caused quite a stir within the Church. The agenda there was pushed by some German quite liberal bishops, but Pope Francis has distanced himself from some of their unorthodox views. Proportionalism may be dying a death, but having held sway for so many decades within the Church, it will be very slow to see off. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.